Hello everyone, my name is Alexander and I'm a mechanic. Today we're going to talk about the Lock Stitch Industrial Sewing Machine and I'll also answer some of your questions. The first question is how to wind a bobbin on an industrial sewing machine. The winder on the industrial sewing machines can be placed in different places. But the technique is the same. We load the bobbin, turn it on, spool the thread a bit. You have to take the thread out of the needle and the loop. Take out the bobbin case so that it doesn't bother you. Don't forget to take up the foot. The machine doesn't turn off, it will be working. We don't need the feed dog to scrape against the foot. Now we can start winding. Don't wind on the high speed, average is ok. When the bobbin is ready, it stops automatically. If you want to know, this screw controls the amount of thread in the bobbin. If you need less, just tighten it a bit. If you need more, you can just undo it. Let's sum up what I showed you. First of all, take the foot up, take the thread out of the needle and the loop, otherwise it would get in. Then take out the bobbin case and only then start winding the thread. Everything is correct and safe. The next question is how much oil we need and how we can change and pour it out. There are usually two marks in the oil pan. They are usually placed here or here on the side. The upper mark meets maximum and the lower minimum. The ideal oil level is between the marks. Here we have it on maximum. In the pan there is usually a drain screw for us to change the oil. In the drain screw there is a magnet, it can be of any form. You need to take it out sometimes just to clean it from the scale, facings, needles. It is placed there to magnetize all the metal stuff so that the pump doesn't drive it in the system. So there is a screw, which you take out, place a bottle underneath and collect the oil. Then we clean the pan, put the magnet back and fill the pan with the oil. It takes about half a liter of oil. You should fill it only with a special oil for sewing machines, which is recommended by the producer. Do not use the car oil. They have different thickness and additives. Just go to a sewing equipment shop and ask the oil for the sewing machines. You need about half a liter to fill the pan. The next question was how to change the needle plate. Some machines, like this one, have such needle plates in the set three row plates, or such, four row plates. They have different feed dogs. Sometimes in the shops they advise you to buy such needle plates with big holes and sharp teeth. Such plates are convenient for the mass producing. You load it and can use it for sewing the items from the strong fabric for a long time. We are working in a studio, so we need to change it fast and easy. 
Remove these aside and take a three row plate. Only the three row plates can have both a small hole, 20-22 mm, and a big hole, up to 28 mm. It's convenient because you don't need to change the feeding dog each time. They feed both. There are no four row plates with the big holes, so it's better for you to buy a set of such feed dog and such plates. Only if it fits your sewing machine. Next question is how to adjust the thread tension to avoid puckering, breaks and loops. Firstly, we need to check the lower thread tension. Checking the upper thread is worthless if the lower is not adjusted. That's the easiest way to do it. Take a full bobbin, place it in the case and pull the thread through. Now hold the thread and look here. It shouldn't drop to the table, but if you shake it, it should just extend a bit and hang. At the same time, it shouldn't hang without moving. It should release the thread slowly. Have a look here. If something goes wrong, there's an adjustment screw. The back screw should always be tightened. It just fixes the plate so that it doesn't move. And this is an adjustment screw. The more you tighten it, the harder is the tension, and vice versa. Undo the screw a bit and check if it's going down. After that you can adjust the other parts. Now let's see how to adjust the upper thread. Thread a machine and start sewing. Let's have a look at the result. It's far from perfect. There are a lot of loops on the back side and the front side looks good. That means that the upper thread is weak. To avoid the loops, we tighten the assembly. Let's check. Tighten it slowly to find the right position. Let's have a look here. Better, but not perfect. Tighten a bit more. Don't turn the nut two or three times at once. Just go bit by bit to find the right moment, so that there are no loops and the stitching is not puckering. It's better to spend more time on adjustment than on corrections. Let's see. The stitching looks better, but still it's not perfect. Tighten a bit more. Now the stitching looks good. On the back side and on the front side. That's how we adjust the thread tension. If the stitching is tied up, release the threads a bit. Check the lower thread if the fabric is fine. Sometimes we even release it a bit intentionally for a case to move faster. After releasing the lower thread, release the upper thread a bit too. 
If the stitching is tied up, release the threads. Let's, for example, tighten it. It starts to break the thread. And you can see that we have the curves in the fabric now because of the over tensioning. Hope you can see it. In the next video, I'll show you how to adjust the tooth with the pressure regulating screw. The more you tighten it, the more pressure you have, and vice versa. Next time, I'll also show you how to change the tooth and tell you how to work with the different types of them. That's all for today. My name is Alexander. If you have any questions, write them in comments, and in the next videos I'll answer them. See you next week!